the panelists who have said lightning talks. So that just means we get through lots of people in one session. So I'm really pleased. Um, I think I will just introduce all of them now so that we can, because um, we're on the wrong side of the stage. So it'll save jumping up and down. So first we will have Atikan from Wikimedia Thailand who is a PhD lecturer in anatomy in the Faculty of Science at the Maldol University. Um, he's also an editor of Wiki Journal of Medicine. Uh, second, I, we have one here, Imelda, who was speaking on behalf of the Wikimedia education team. And Imelda will be presenting some updates on the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom project. She is one of the local coordinators of the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom pilot program in 2020. She's also part of the EduWiki outreach collaborators um, for the ECAP region. Aegis Damanik is a Wikimedian from Indonesia. He's been an active editor in English Wikipedia, Indonesian Wikisource, Wikidata, and is an admin of Indonesia Wikipedia, Indonesian Wikipedia. And we just have three. I did have Wafik, are you coming up? Well, bring a chair, please. <laughs> uh, thanks, Wafik is um, exec on the executive committee of the Wikimedia Community User Group Malaysia. So a big hand for Wafik, who is our sole representative from Malaysia. So <laughs> speaking on behalf of all of those who we are very sorry have to watch from home. Um, he has a Bachelor of um, Major in Medicine and Surgery interested in the Wikimedia Project Medicine and Health. So we are very pleased to have them all. We'll try and keep on time and you can just clap each one at the end and the next one will come up and keep your questions till the end. Have a great session, everyone. So uh, good morning. Um, thank you, the organizing committee, for this opportunity to be on stage. So first of all, my name is Atik Suwanakan. I'm from uh, Wikipedia Thailand. And today I'm going to be wearing my professorial hat because I work as lecturer at Mahidol University. And also I serve as editor of Wiki Journal of Medicine. Um, so today's topic is about Wikipedia page views as a potential metric in curriculum development. So for the sake of time and for the ease of understanding, I will be focusing on only on medical curriculum. Right? So, as educators, I think we have this um, very similar problem: how do we choose the content that we teach? Right. So, um, we do it through the lens of what? So, there are different kinds of lenses that we can use as guidelines. For example, at the international level, we have the um, what we call World Federation of Medical Education, right? It's abbreviated as WFME. So if we narrow down to at the national level, um, we have medical competency assessment criteria for national license. So it's basically all the exam questions, the topics that a medical student needs to cover in order to have the national license. And then at the university level, we have university curriculum, which is gonna govern all the content. But the problem is that, do these guidelines really reflect what students need to study? Because these guidelines, while they tell you what to teach, they do not rank which concepts or topics are more or less important than others. Right? So that's the exact problem that we are trying to tackle. So to make it simple, I'm going to use uh, musculoskeletal anatomy, which is a small subfield in the field of medicine. All right? And on the left-hand side is a very old um, anatomy textbook named Gray's Anatomy. So this is like the father of all anatomy books that's being used today. So within the scope of musculoskeletal anatomy, there are approximately 2,260 concepts and structures that a student have to memorize in order to be able to take the exam. 
And what happened is that in 2019, right, a group of anatomists, educators, and doctors from all around the world, um, they took part in like a meeting, and then they discussed whether all these 2,260 structures they are essential or not. So they categorize these structures and concepts into four categories, including essential, important, acceptable, and not required. So for example, uh, this is the brachial plexus, all right? Um, it's the top row. So if you are a medical student, uh, you should probably know what it is. So 80% <laughs> so of um, anatomists uh, regarded brachial plexus as essential content, while only 18 percent of the people involved in that panel said it's important. So brachial plexus is relatively more important. Meanwhile, interosseous intercuniform ligaments, it's just ligaments that nobody care about. That's why it's not required by 55% of the people who rated it. So this is um, from the academic perspective, but in the real world situation, does it really reflect the student's need? So what I do is that um, I retrieve the uh, raw paper, I mean, raw data from that research paper. So I list out um, all the topics, right? So there should be just 21 roles, but in fact, 2000 something roles. And then the second, third, fourth, and fifth column is gonna be the ratings that we just saw. So what I did was I converted these um, percentage into what we call normalized expert ratings. So for essential category, um, I, do, I multiplied by four and for important category, multiplied by three, two, and one respectively in order to create that normalized expert ranking. So why do we do that? The reason is that you, you create normalization for two purposes. One is to avoid clusters in your data set. So if you're familiar with things like machine learning and on the logarithmic scale, you have to normalize it first to avoid clusters. And the other reason is that you uh, have to create complete ranking among these structures. So which one is more important, which one is less important. So that's called normalization of the ratings. And next is that we identify the corresponding Wikipedia page of that particular structure or concept. So this is a very time consuming process since there are 2000 structures. It took us like a whole month, you know, just to find the corresponding page of that structure. And it's verified manually by humans. So otherwise, there might... how long do I have? <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. So that was a lengthy process. And after that, uh, for example, uh, the first and the second lines, since they have the same names, but they are different entities anyway, because these two muscles are presented both in our hand and in our feet. So that's why there are two different pages for those uh, for the same structure. So what we do after that is that we retrieve, retrieve the page views of those 2000 articles, but we do not do it manually. We there are tools on TwoForge, right? Things like API, blah, blah, blah. So you can do that like automatically. So finally, we will perform correlational analysis and see which factors, which parameters are associated with one another. So let's get to the result. So the first thing that we found is that we found the correlation between the expert ratings and the page views of those corresponding Wikipedia articles. So on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see like a scatter plot and the X axis, um, that refers to the expert ratings, while the Y axis, it represents page views in logarithmic scale, right? So you can see the articles with highly rated topics, they tend to have more page views. Yeah? And we have the uh, line of best fit, which does not really fit, in fact, because that's because of the logarithmic scale. But you can see the positive correlation with the Spearman rules of um, 0 0.49, that's really good. And the p-value is significant. So that's the correlation between um, expert ratings and the page views. Right? And another parameter that we investigated 
is the correlation between the expert ratings and the number of inter-wiki links that each article has. So you can see that articles of, that are highly rated tended to have more inter-wiki links, right? So this is just another example of the correlation. So in short, um, I did page views of Wikipedia articles. Um, they could be used as indicators of content significance, yeah? So both from student perspective and also patient perspective, because if you go back to all these guidelines, they're all used by doctors, right? But it, when it comes to medical practice, it's not just doctors that rely on this health information, it's also the patients that look up on Wikipedia. They also see similar information as well. So I hope that we can benefit um, from using metrics like page view um, as indicators for cognitive significance. And Wikipedia page views um, and possibly other parameters as well could be developed as metrics in medical curriculum. So next step, what we are gonna do is that apart from the uh, page views and what else, the number of links, we are planning to investigate other parameters, for example, number of edits, number of bytes, and also very important, the quality scales. Yeah, because on each um, Wikipedia page, um, a page is also assigned to like a wiki project, right? And for that particular project, an article is given a rating like A, B, C, right? We can also take that into account and see whether our ratings are correlated with that quality scale to see whether lay readers, like normal people like us and the experts, they rate the articles the same way or in the same way or not. And the second uh, point is that we are planning to expand our protocol to other fields of study to something more general, not just anatomy, but something um, that we all study, things like chemistry, basic biology and stuff. You are a biology student, right? <laughs> and, oh, sorry. And it will lead to uh, publication opportunities and the role of Wikipedia in curriculum in general. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the time and place for me to present what I want to present here. My name is Agus Damani. I am the contact person for Indonesian Wiki Search Community and also Indonesian Wikipedia Administrator. So to make it fast, because I have only a little time, so I will, I will catch up to my what I want to present here. Yeah. So the problem is that the Wiki Search is kind of open look in terms of Wikimedia project. So Okay, thank you. I think we have so little during material. So what kind of solution that I want to do it? So what kind of the recommended decision solution is I use the social media. Because in terms of data, the social media user in Indonesia is a big number. It's 191.4 million in terms of 69.4 percent. And uh, uh, is the is the bold article. So the one who uses social media in Indonesia is almost all people who use internet because thank you. The data penetration because the internet okay, okay it's good. Because internet penetration is 79%. So it means all people in Indonesia use Social media when they are can be used by the internet. So and it also increased for 2.1 million every year. So there will be a, a bigger user and contributor to be reached by our KBD projects. But the problem is that Indonesia is the second place, the lowest place in terms of reading interest. I think I kind of not believe it because I think we love reading, especially gossip articles. So the first thing that we need to do before we kind to do content is data collection. So I collect the, the collection for the pack, the pregnant and solvable collection to, to the three step, beginner, advanced, and expert. So people will kind of not be to be confused what kind of thing that we need to do first in wiki source. So what kind of text that we need, how to do proofreading, so what to be done first before doing validation, so and et cetera, et cetera. 
So after I collect the data, I need to make it compact because not, not everyone have enough time to read our social media. So to make it interesting, make it compact. So when you look to at my content, I just dip it into the titles and the links because not all people know Wikisource. source. So we need to emphasize what link that they need to be seen. And the other one, so I need to make the tutorial in one sentence and every line have their own keyword. For the first line, there is a text, what kind of text that you want to read. And the second one is what is the books. And the third one is point to the red, the red number because it's the page that you need to appropriate, not the, the yellow one or the green one. On the next, highlight and make it as straight. After you have that content, you need to make it, the content is as positive one, as important as possible for the newcomers. So they didn't need to read all the spots that you have. So at first they need to read this to be an uh, introduction to what they need to do in the wiki source. And the final things, and not only visuals, we need to video because we have so slow connection internet. It's just like a snail. So we need to compress it to a small size. I use Handbrake, it's a free, it's open source to make it small so people will not face lagging video because as you can see in the average global we are almost passing half is so sad actually so at the end of the at the end of the content you need to summarize all the link on the link on the your bio so people can visit what they want to do what they need to do the wiki search project and that's all the bit that's all what i present your solo bit thank you everyone Uh, good morning, everyone. This is me again, Melda. So I will be speaking in behalf of the Wikimedia education team, and I will be giving some updates on the reading Wikipedia in the classroom experience, both global and in the ECF region. So as of uh, 2020, uh, we have the report that there are uh, 1 million uh, school aided children, but we only have like 90 million teachers worldwide, which give us uh, the opportunity to like uh, give uh, education in any form that uh, we can may, may be virtual or offline or uh, uh, tra informal trainings that we can give uh, to these children. So um, um, moving from having the feeling of uh, oh no, uh, this program creates the change from having the change from giving the feeling of oh oh yes and the confidence to like share and share and use Wikipedia in their in their own. All right, and also uh, this program additionally gives us uh, the opportunity to develop uh, the media and information literacy among our. Uh, students in the process. So uh, the elements that went into designing the program is adaptation and contextualization, co-creation and collaboration, and building a community and uh, the open pedagogy. So uh, the open pedagogy is, in short, is uh, the process of using open and educational resources and practices to support learning and open sharing of teaching practice, practices uh, with the goal of improving education and training, be it institutional, professional, or on the individual level. I'm lost, sorry. So, yeah. So, uh, Basically, uh, the core uh, of this is that uh, we develop autonomy and interdependence within our students, also giving them the freedom and responsibility and teaching them how the shared ownership and part participation works. So these are the core, core values uh, within the development of the Reading Wikipedia in the classroom program. Yes, yeah, so the examples of this uh, open values are establishing the classroom, physical or virtual. So it doesn't mean that when we see classroom, we are in a four corner structured. Uh, we can like have a group of three and teaching each other and helping each other grow. And also 
uh, students create as part of their learning and their work adds value beyond the classroom. So uh, they can learn anywhere, anytime, as long as they want to learn. And also students are encouraged to ask critical questions and think about their own thinking patterns. So students may have their voice and how and what, what they want to learn. Yep, so these are the uh, modules for the reading Wikipedia. It includes understanding information, evaluating information, and creating information. As of the moment, we have like 10, 10 plus languages. It is translated in more than 10 languages, but uh, not more, not more. So uh, I think for now, the only language being represented here in the Eastern region is Tagalog and Bahasa Indonesia. So, Did I say it right? Yes. So yeah, uh, more on the pilot program of the education. So in 2020, we, we have the pilot program in Bolivia, Morocco, and the Philippines. And uh, with this uh, pilot program, we reached more than 7,000 teachers and 600 of them participated in the actual training in which 170 teachers were be able to finish the program and get certified. And we were, we were able to develop uh, these modules in three languages, including Tagalog, uh, Spanish, and I forget that one. <laughs> but yeah, it's Arabic, 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 English, and Spanish, and Tagalog. So where are we and where are we going now? Um, we are done with the pilot uh, program. And we already have certified teachers, and they are already implementing uh, their own local events in 30 countries. And we have also scaled and developed the teachers' trainers of training. And uh, going forward, we want uh, to host more trainings uh, globally. So uh, this is the actual reach of the program. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't show the reach that the reach that each community member has. This is only the reach that the Wikimedia Education team uh, recorded in their own. So the numbers is far much more bigger than this. So yeah, uh, so at the moment we have 53 certified trainers from these 30 countries, and 100 1,400 of these teachers are actually participated in the training. And 158 are certified. So uh, we have certified teachers uh, doing reading Wikipedia, but we also have certified trainers. So uh, th those are a different group of uh, certified uh, teachers. So in Bolivia and in Morocco, uh, they already have started their second and third implementation of the training. And right now we have the second round of uh, trainings to be conducted and they are still under uh, the grants uh, process. Uh, but however, in the ECF region, I think we only have three or four and it's represented by the Philippines, New Zealand and Indonesia. So why, why do we, why, what is the opportunities that we have if we like uh, join this training? Uh, we can be certified by the Wikimedia Education team and uh, certified trainers. We'll have the opportunity to join the network of Wikipedia with uh, this 21st century skills. Uh, it means that they will be able to teach media and information literacy across their country and also professional development. Uh, it, is, it looks very nice to have an international training in your CV and also you will have access to the grants uh, in developing your own iteration of the program. So that's it for me. And thank you so much. If you have more questions, there are, there are links on the inner pad and you can like uh, just reach out to the education team or me or Banj. I would like to acknowledge that my co-coordinator from the Philippines is here, Banj Padilla. Thank you so much. Thank you, Imelda, for the great presentations. And I will start with imaginations. Okay, imagine you are going to the hospital because you are sick. Are you meeting a doctor? And the doctor say, 
you are diagnosed with Les Nyman syndrome and in continue with syndrome Les Nyman adalah gangguan yang jarang diwarisi dan disebabkan oleh kekurangan enzim hypoxanthine guanine phosphorylglycine transferase dan kekurangan ini berlaku kerana mutasi dalam gen HPRT1 yang terletak pada kromosom X. This you understand that? Yeah, I believe them. Because you don't speak that. Unless for the Wikimedia Indonesia community. So, that is where Wikimedia comes in the education. We are getting Wikimedia edu uh, projects, Wikimedia movement into the health educations, be it in the formal or non-formal educations. Before that, there is a warning here. You're going to see a lot of number of studies. <laughs> okay, so the health has been a common concern everywhere, be it in the Asia, in the America. It is everywhere because people are afraid of dying. Also, people are curious of what is the underlying cases, what is going on on them, especially for the patients, for the family, their friends. Okay. This is just a random uh, statistic from the English Wikipedia. And look on the 2019. The one of the most viewed pages in the English Wikipedia is deaths in 2019. And in the 2020, it is also deaths in 2020. And in the 2021, also deaths in 2000, 2021. People are so eager to know about deaths in the Wikipedia. I don't know why. Okay. So in the 2020, we could see there is like uh there is uh the second the third place is the 2019 and 20 coronavirus pandemic. If you could see at the 2019, the gaps between the second place and the hundred place is almost like 30 uh, million views. So this is the statistic from the Malay Wikipedia in 2019, which is uh few pages this which is the most used in the Malay Wikipedia we could see there is the mom dengue which is dengue fever uh wasir or hemorrhoids and we have thalassemia this is a few of the half contents in the Malay Wikipedia that has been built uh in the Malay Wikipedia so you can see there in the 2019 there is almost 121,000 of viewers that is a lot of number actually for the Malay Wikipedia it is not a small number. So we could see it is uh, a critical where we need to expand this uh, half contents in the Wikipedia. So uh, there is a research by the Pew, not PewDiePie, Pew Internet and American Life Project, a Washington research firm, found in the 2001 where 62% of the internet users search for the half related topics online. And in the 2003, there is 80% of the online user, which is roughly around 93 million of the Americans, looks for the uh, health related topic. Mostly topics of interest is the mental health, immunization to sexual health information, and also the disease or specific medical conditions, which is almost 63%. Yeah, so what's, what is the idea actually? We want to have the availabilities of the health contents in the Wikipedia in the local language. Okay. So uh, in the Malaysia, we are studying a Wiki Project Probatan, or literally known as the Wiki Project Medicines, which is starts on the March 2020 in the sparks of the COVID-19 pandemic. And roughly have six members we signed up for the project, but I believe there is more than that. In the English version, it started in 2004 by the Dr. Jacob as the clinical medicine wiki project and branch of that is the clinical project, wiki project. And the uh, statistic from the wiki project probatans from the start, from the beginnings of the project until uh, last few days, two days ago, uh, you can see there's like trends of going increase and decrease. This means that there is a continuous views of the medical contents in the Wikipedia. So um, from the beginning, we, we could calculate, we, we could see there is like 7, 000, 7 million of the views. This is collected by the page view too. Yeah, we have 7 million views in the Wiki Project Provider. That is amazing in the numbers actually. 
So this is just this is statistic from the uh, Malay Wikipedia also. It is in the 2019 because see there is uh, lots of views in the articles on the pandemic COVID-19 and the coronavirus 2019. So imagine if there is no such articles and the people are not able to understand the English or could hardly understand the English. That's going to be a bit hard for them, you know, to keep up with what is going on, what is actually happening around them. So that is why we need to have uh, the medical contents in the uh, local language. So this is another statistic. I know lots of statistics here. Uh, in the medicine category in the English Wikipedia, you can see there's lots of millions of number in there. And this is just medicine category actually, not including the others category. I believe there's more than that. And the page views for just uh, for just uh, this year, we have 37 million views. That is just for English, Wikipedia, and uh, medicine category. Yeah. Other than that, we also work on the uh, work have day with the uh, work have organization representative office for the Malaysia, Brunei, Darussalam, and the Singapore. We did uh, events, which is the Wiki Sehat, in conjunction with the World Health Day for a month in April 2021. And it is launched on the 7th April. And we have uh, 17 articles created in, the, in that month, and there's uh, 14,000 views in the Wiki Sehat. And there's about eight users in the, participating in the events. So what we are expecting to do, we, we would like to outreach the education in the Malaysia by involving the medical institutions in, to contribute in the creations, in the translations, in the edits, to a series of workshops and training, like ones that has been uh, done by the Wikimedia uh, Korea, I think, on the HIV and AIDS. That's what we are thinking of doing. And weekly or monthly Wikipedia reading in primary and high school uh, with the collaboration with the Young Study Clubs or Club Dr. Muda. This club is uh, available in all um, high school and primary schools in Malaysia. We would like to do this as what have uh, the Emilja and the team in the education team has done. We would like to um, correlate the education, I mean the medical contents with their educations and reading Wikipedia and quizzes in the classroom in conjunction of particular events. For example, we have World Diabetes Day and then maybe that day we can have uh, readings about the diabetes in a Wikipedia or translation or editing about that. Yeah, that's what we are expecting to do. And why we are studying in education because that is where the formal and non-formal education studying. So as uh, in the idioms of ban the bamboos, but it's still a shoot. In the Malay, we call it Malento Bulubilang Dari Rabonia. We want to cultivate knowledge in the small age, and then they can develop it as they grow as a adult. So what are the challenges that we are facing now? We are lack of manpower. That is, I believe it is happens in the worldwide, actually. Because I myself has a bit of uh, problems to contribute in Malaysia because I was studying abroad and we are lack of member, we don't have enough member, but with the grants that was provided by the Wikimedia Foundation, I hope there will be an uh, that, that could help us in expanding our uh, our movement because uh, starting from the grants that we have done, we have uh, received from the uh, foundation we are now moving on to more institutes, institutions, the university, the school. So I hope there will be more uh, expansions in the future. Okay. So I was hoping that Wikipedia can be used as a tool for knowledge, which is to read, to listen, to consume for formal and informal education. So that's all for me. Thank you.
Thank you so much to our um, four panellists, unbelievably keeping on time. Thank you. <laughs> and that will let uh, the next session get set up because I don't really have much time in between and it's a workshop, but we do have a few minutes then for questions. So if um, we'll do our thank you. So we'll um, just say a really big thank you to all four presenters. They, they were all fantastic topics and I think we can all take something away from those. So please give them a round of applause. And if you have a question for any one of them, can you let me know? And we'll just run this microphone around. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you so much. I have my question for Agus. Uh, um, the question is, uh, I would like to know more about the impact of the social media campaign. How many people joined in? How many uh, pages did they proofread? Anything uh, around that? Actually, the impact of social media has been increased the like that we got in the Twitter because we recently changed the way that we, we deliver the content and it's decreased the workload that we have when to teach people appropriate. So there's a, there's a big number of people who was kind of reading. It's actually usually just only one or two people doing appropriating, but right now there's kind of four or five recently routine doing appropriating in Wikisource. Thank you. Any more questions? Just be glad you're not flying today. I just got a, a warning to say uh, flights will be disrupted this afternoon with that wind that you're hearing. <laughs> um, any other questions? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so this is not actually a question, but I would like to emphasize that uh, the Wikimedia education team is inviting everyone to like send uh, any activities uh, relating to education, be it formal or informal, be it within the classroom or outside, that uh, you may always uh, send them uh, in their monthly newsletter so that your uh, organization and your events will get promoted to the entire community. Thank you so much. Just to jump. Yeah, uh, other than being my being president of a Wikimedia affiliate, I was also a president of the Rotary Club in the Philippines, and I'm a Paul Harris fellow. I make an annual contribution of $1,000 every year for the elimination of polio. And uh, one of our key projects in the Rotary Club is the Read Aloud program. And we have pioneered the read aloud program in the Philippines since seven years ago. It's in the article in Meta. And so uh, perhaps I would uh, uh, suggest uh, if, if, uh, if the education efforts of, of uh, Wikimedia in the Philippines would be done in coordination with the Rotary Club, because we also have a lot of sources for funding. Thanks, Johnny. That's a great idea. I think we've got one more. Uh, is that Fiona? <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you. I have not a question, but a request for Atikun. I found your analysis of um, sort of content importance and Wikimedia, Wikipedia views really interesting. And you were talking about some other parameters that you're going to look at next. Uh, I'm obsessed with images and illustration on Wikipedia. So I would sort of encourage you to maybe think about sort of number and quality of pictures as another one of the parameters that you might consider in the next stage of your research. But thank you very much. Super interesting research so far. Thank you. Good idea. 